Good morning. It's Thursday, July 31st, 2014. This is Tech Talk Today, episode 36. My name is Chris, and we've got a fun show today. If nothing else, I'm extremely excited because at the end of today's episode, we're going to do a special unboxing. So if you're watching the video version of Tech Talk Today, this would be a treat. But you'll still get an idea of what it is. The box is right here. I'm not going to say what it is. Don't look. No peeking. We'll do an unboxing. I'm really excited special rig but let's uh, first start by introducing the mumble room this morning good morning mumble room morning morning morning, morning. morning. Hello. wow that was almost musical <laughs> all right guys Mine was musical. get uh, get your mud uh, kicking boots on because our first story's got me all fired up sprint is planning to sell a $12 wireless plan that only connects to twitter or facebook yeah, uh, for $12, subscribers can soon buy a wireless plan that would only connect you to Facebook. That's the only thing you could do. For that same price, they could choose instead to connect only with Twitter or Instagram or Pinterest. And then for $10 more, you can enjoy unlimited use of all four. Another $5 gets them unlimited streaming of music apps of their choice. The plan, offered under the company's Virgin Mobile brand of prepaid services, comes as a wireless carriers are experimenting with ways to make wireless internet access more affordable for the poorest consumers by offering special deals on just slices of the web. Okay. All Gateway right. Drug. Now let's talk about this because uh, T-Mobile kind of uh, started this slope. They threw some water on the slope when they announced, you know, you could stream from your favorite music service unlimited with their special plan. This is now the next iteration of the tier architecting of the internet where it becomes like a cable plan where you can get bundles and packages uh, they are figuring that they're testing the long-held principle that all internet traffic should be treated equally. They say maybe not. Let's base strong incentives for subscribers to use dominant services. This is Sprint's logic here. So remember, in June, T-Mobile said to allow customers to use unlimited streaming of music. Earlier this year, AT&T created a program allowing companies to foot the bill for data used by their customers. So, you know, iTunes could help pay for mobile data usage if they wanted to. The uh, Virgin Mobile plan will be called custom, and it's aimed at giving consumers more choice. The plan is only available at Walmart, and these base offering covers just 20 minutes of talk time and 20 text messages. Subscribers can customize the plan by buying up to unlimited talk or text and by choosing different data packages. So here we go. This is why it's bad. Because the internet now is becoming a marketing differentiating gimmick. It is something that carriers can use to make their service look more compelling over another service. But what happens is, is you end up having to divvy up the internet into established services that you can put into a marketing box with a bullet point, and you end up creating essentially lock-in to those services. Because by it, the incentive-based architecture of the billing, the consumer isn't going to want to go out to other services or new sites or new services because they are paying out the nose, the nose for that data. This, just like I was upset with T-Mobile, is horrible. This is horrible. And when you see these B-level players doing it, you can only imagine what the big dogs are going to do. And everything in the wireless industry goes like this. It's precedent setting. When these guys do this, it sets a precedent, and the other guys do this. Mumble room, am I just, am I all out of whack on this? Am I wrong, or do you guys agree? Uh... I agree to a certain extent. Now, one thing I've got to point out is that um, it is definitely negative in the freedom dimension. That's as, for sure. And the other part about that is, you know, the the T-Mobile Music thing that comes with their standard wireless that comes with their standard data plans. It doesn't ma- really have to be. It's not a special one at all. Well, it's special in the sense that it's a differentiator, right? It's a marketing thing where they're saying, come yeah. join us. No, well, listen, because here's the thing. This is the this is the fundamental problem. What they're doing is they're saying, come over to T-Mobile because you get Pandora for free. You get iTunes for free. You get yeah, Spotify for free. It's, it's a huge problem. It is... I, I think it is perhaps the one of the biggest threats to net neutrality in general. First of all, everybody's transitioning to wireless. A lot of stuff's be happening on, when you're talking to average consumers, it's happening on these mobile devices. So what happens at wireless becomes extremely important. And what happens here in the U.S. will likely happen everywhere else. So all of these things have very long-reaching ramifications. But when you productize different services on the Internet, you are creating essentially like the cable bundles, where you now have different cable companies who compete against each other on the different channel lineups and things like that. This is bad. This is really bad for for independent content creators, too. Because think about it, Eric. If, If you wanted to, say, 
maybe next year, start a new podcast network. And it was going to be, you know, uh, Eric Broadcasting. Why would a consumer on a mobile device ever spend their their precious data downloading content from some guy they've never heard of before when it's going to cost them so severely when they can instead go download something from the brand, from a company they know, for free? You see, it's it, in, it unintentionally sort of stifles innovation on the Internet. I, okay, I, I see what you're talking about there. And, yeah, I, I do have to agree that it, you know, I didn't see it from that perspective before, to be honest. And, you know, I, I believe it or not, I'm a T-Mobile customer. Uh, just the way it worked out. Um, sadly, I have, I'm noticing that they don't exactly have the best service. <laughs> but, you know, um, it is what it is right now. We'll maybe see that change in the future if this net neutrality thing ever takes off. But the problem is... I don't know. The trend that I'm seeing is that it's just going clearly the opposite direction. I know. That's it's, true. It, it's really unfortunate. I mean, you look at what the FCC is proposing. They're doing it under the guise of net neutrality when what they want to propose is not net neutrality. You know what, though? It strikes me It strikes me as the uh, salmon fisher who dumps their, uh, bo- their boat's byproducts in the same water they fish from. It's like yeah. th- th- the future of these companies will depend on innovation on the internet and all of us wanting access to these services, and, and they have such a, a sweet position to be in, but instead, they're crapping in the very pool they swim in. Mm-hmm. It's just going to get worse for them if they keep going down this road, to be honest. Yeah. I, I, uh, sorry, I have to ask, why, um, if this is Sprint... Why don't we just use Ting? Well, yeah, you could, right? Yeah. You, very, and you, I mean, they don't even sponsor here, but exactly, right? You go to Ting, you just pay for what you use. That is the better model. The, the problem is, I think uh, consumers are used to these kind of packaged gimmicks. See, the, I, mean, I mean it when I say the hardest thing about Ting is you have to rethink about how you value and pay for wireless. Because it, we have... We have this industry has always been in America, has always been this way. So we have a very hard time thinking of it differently. And so these kind of these gimmicky products are just sort of an extension of what we already are sort of programmed to expect. We should be just saying, let me just pay for what I use. That should be how it is fundamentally. That should be the base option. That's where every carrier should be starting. And then they could build their stupid, crappy gimmicks on top of that. Well, that's not going to change unless the sheep. I'm, I'm sorry, people uh, figure that out. <laughs> uh, all right, Lionhead, did you want to get anything in before we move on to the next topic? No, that was covered pretty okay. goodly. All right, I well think- then, I, I think this is some good news. Too bad Popey's not here. I kind of snuck this in when you're thinking maybe he'd uh, sort of uh, pop in here on a Thursday. But some great news for Ubuntu Phone. It's a little weird though, right? Because it's almost strange bedfellows at the same time. Uh, Ubuntu Phone is going to be integrating Nokia Here Maps. This is, I think, no, the Ubuntu phone's largest challenge is establishing first class applications like this because they're going into a marketplace where certain aspects like mapping are really, really, really well served. Like every mature mobile platform has mapping down now. And the beauty of this is, is the Nokia Here Maps are sort of renowned for being great. That's kind of what they're known for. So the fact that they're going to be integrating this on Ubuntu phones seems like a great win for Ubuntu phone services. Here we'll provide a hybrid solution taking advantage of the assisted GPS and Wi-Fi that's in Ubuntu phones. And of course, Ubuntu phone has GPS uh, location stuff in it right now because it's going to depend on your hardware, I would assume. But they're going to have a fully integrated solution which will be available to thousands of application developers. So they'll be able to, you'll be able to put that in your app as well. How cool is this? You guys think it's weird? Because, I mean, this is kind of like a Microsoft Nokia thing. Is it strange bedfellows? It's very cool and very weird at the same time. Of course, from Ubuntu's perspective, bug number one is fixed, so they don't <laughs> even need to worry about that. Yeah. yeah. So it, as far as this goes, I see that as it, it's a win for Ubuntu, definitely. It's just really strange that Microsoft would permit Nokia to go into a competitor like that. Well, I think th- they want it all under their umbrella. It, we, uh, I believe here is still is still wholly owned by Nokia. I don't think that went to Microsoft. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it's you know, so it's they're they're making a deal now. And Nokia, think about it. Isn't Nokia in a great position to offer first class platform services to some of these mobile operating systems that maybe don't have the resources to roll their own? Like, I mean, you look at with all of the financial resources and market share that Apple has iOS Maps, in comparison to Google Maps, still falls short. 
in many estimation. So how could Canonical ever compete with Google Maps? Well, this is how. They go with somebody who's now dedicated to, to, to building these services. I think it's a smart move. I like it. And I'm not even saying that because Popey uh, was going to be here potentially. I really think this is a good move for them. And I think it's... I, uh, this is something I've been struggling with. What do I want to move to? I think I want to move from Android. So what platform do I want to move to? Well, whatever I move to, I damn well better have first-class apps now because it, guess what? It's almost 2015. So I'm not going to move to something that has applications like from 2007. Maybe that'll work for you. It doesn't work for me. No judgy. It's just not going to work for me. But they do this kind of stuff. It means the Ubuntu platform could, at least in the mapping department, have first-class navigation. So I think that's awesome. Hey, uh... Maybe this is a, a trend we're seeing. Another move away from Google Plus. Hangouts now work without a Google Plus account. Nice. Is this is that, is that is cool? I mean, it's great, but I mean, holy s! Like they, this is a huge, huge departure away from Google Plus. You have to have a Google account of some kind. Uh, but until this change, you had to have specifically a Google Plus account with your profile all set up in order to use Hangouts. Starting today, that requirement is gone. Anybody with a Google Apps account will now be able to start or join a meeting from their desktop or a Chromebook. For now, however, the requirement is still in place on mobile. So if you want to use Hangouts on mobile, you still got to have a Google Plus account. Uh, yeah, and this, I don't know. Yeah, this, 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 I, I see this as good in one way that people don't need a Hangouts or a Google Plus account anymore. Bad in another way. Does this is this the first nail in the coffin for Google Plus? I think. Well, I think maybe the first nail was uh, a, a couple of weeks ago when we saw the real name uh, thing get dropped too. Oh yeah, uh, so that, basically two nails. Right. Exactly. And uh, we also saw some changes with Google Voice, where you could now use Google Hangout calling in Google Voice without having to have a Google Plus account. So it's actually kind of the third nail in a sense. It's kind of like it's like it's like two point five nails, uh, and and I think. It could just be. I wouldn't. I wouldn't look too much into this because the other thing is, is I think Google has discovered that a lot of uh, the Silicon Valley type startups are opening up Hangouts, and they're just leaving them open all day when they're working with teams in other offices. And Hangouts has become like this collaboration tool that's being used a lot in business. So I, I think they're maybe potentially considering taking on services like GoToMeeting and moving into that territory and integrating it as a Google offering. Because Hangouts does screen sharing. There's a lot of little apps that add some great functionality, like you can draw and highlight. You can share docs. You can integrate with Google Docs while you're taking meeting notes. That would actually be the killer app for that. Yeah, so maybe they're just backing away from Google Plus to make it less consumer and make it more business friendly. Because you still have to have that Google account. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I was thinking yeah, I was about thinking about. Oh, go, like, go headline. I was thinking about um, things like if this will affect uh, people that want to um, uh, record it directly to YouTube or something like that. Because oh yeah, you do. I think you don't get that functionality unless you have a Plus account. That, so there is some reduced functionality if you don't have a Plus account. And I think you, there's no Hangouts on Air either. So you lose some that, stuff. That makes but, sense. Yeah, so yeah. if you want the advanced features, you get you get Google Plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to do the live stuff and whatnot. Uh, that makes hey, sense. We got two more stories to get to. Uh, the, the make me smile, but first, I just want to. Oh, and then we're gonna do the unboxing too. That's right. Uh, but first, I wanted to thank our patrons over at patreon.com slash today. You guys are investing in the future of the Jupiter Broadcasting Network, and I don't actually like just mean that in a small way. I mean, really, like, we're considering doing stuff that we've never considered doing. Uh, you've just witnessed one of them, the trip to OSCON. The expenses that Jupiter Broadcasting occurred to make that trip, which is probably more than you might think. It's, you know, a little bit over $1,000, uh, or maybe potentially more, actually. Um, that was funded from our patron. And how would we have done that before? Well, I would have maybe been able to acquire a special sponsor to sponsor our trip, but that would have also meant that every interview we did would have said, you know, this is brought to you by. Instead, we went down there and we never thought about any of that. We focused on the content, what we could bring back to our community. And we've integrated it into Tech Talk Today, Linux Action Show, and Linux Unplugged. So it was a great investment. And you made that possible by being one of our patrons, patreon.com slash today. 
we have some suggested pledge levels. It's a monthly dollar amount that is contributed to the network. I recommend you start around $3, but any amount you can afford, more or less, is great. There's some preset pledge levels. I'll be making some changes to the higher tiers in the future to integrate sort of a, a council of folks that we can bounce future ideas off of when those circumstances come up. It's nothing quite official yet, but it's something I'm considering. And this is a this is a way to raise funds for the entire network. Now, we celebrate it here in Tech Talk today for a couple of reasons. One, so that way I don't have to go on and on in every show. And two, I am I am the type of person who couldn't just sit back and just take the money. I, I feel like I have to give you something in return. So that is this show. That's I get here every morning and I do this for you. And as a way to say thank you to all 278 of you, 278 of you are making me show up every single morning, and you can become one of those. I, 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 it might not be too long until we get that to 300. That would be really a great milestone. Patreon.com slash today. Thank you to everybody who keeps this show on the air and helps us grow the network and keep things a little weird. And that barbecue challenge payoff will start next week on Thursday's episode. Best chicken ever. I'm just saying. I mean, I hope I don't oversell it, but best chicken ever. All right, two last news stories before we get to the unboxing. Um, I don't know how I feel about this one. I'm kind of excited, but I, I'm a little disappointed. We've got our first peek at the new BitTorrent uh, chat client called Bleep. Now, you might, you, Bleep is a chat client that doesn't rely on any central servers. It uses encrypted chat, and it's using the uh, DHT uh, distributed hash tables that like BitTorrent uses to do distributed uh, location finding without having to have a central server almost maybe kind of a little bit like a blockchain. And so where my hesitation comes in is, first of all, it's a Windows-only beta, and it's limited. But second of all, yeah, second of all, um, you know, not open source. And I was thinking about this last night on the drive home when I was thinking about how what I wanted to say about this story. And what it dawned on me is, is what really what would be the advantage i mean yes i love no central server got me there i love that it's encrypted but this is not the only program on the block anymore if if nobody else was making a chat client that was encrypted and had no central server i think i'd be a little more excited but now that there's other things out there like talks and other applications that are being developed I don't see what the competitive differentiator is for BitTorrent Sync or BitTorrent Chat. Now, BitTorrent Sync I do a little bit because of the whole key system. Uh, but, but for the chat, I'm not seeing it. Anybody in the mumble room seeing it? What am I not getting? Kernel Linux, what about your clients who want a secure chat system that's really easy for them to set up, something they could chat with their folks on the road, on laptops, people back at the office, maybe somebody at home who's homesick? You you gotta have at least considered what is it what is a chat system I could set up for my clients and I don't have to manage a server. This might be an option. Would you consider using it? Absolutely. I uh, so one of the things is is most of the time uh, my clients are looking for they they're gonna dictate to me what software they want to use in their infrastructure. Right. It's a rare day that I get to <laughs> I get to come in and say, well, here's what I think you guys should do. But I would absolutely consider this client, with the one exception, if it doesn't run on Linux, I would never recommend yeah. it because yeah. my goal, obviously, is to move those guys to Linux. And I can safely say at this point, since 2009, we have never implemented a software solution on our recommendation that – if and when the time comes, I recommend we, they move to Linux, that everything that we've recommended isn't going to work flawlessly in Linux. I would assume, because the way they did BitTorrent Sync was first, they, I think they had the Windows client, and then they released the, all the other platforms. Yeah, that, and that uh, great. And when maybe when that time rolls around, then, yeah. uh, then I would consider it. But yeah, it's, if it's a Windows only at. thing. It's just yeah, if it's a Windows only thing. And here's the other thing too. The reality is, at least you know we're primarily we deal a lot in the hospitality industry. It's a rare. I I, I haven't seen a big need for um, secure communication, uh, collaborative communication. Most they're just going to pick up the phone and call. Yeah, I I feel like though once you get into it, if it works on mobile, which we don't know about this, and especially. You got to wonder how that would work on mobile. But if it does like pictures and maybe voice messages and you can do file transfers and you don't have to have a central server, I could see the appeal to JB. I mean, right now we're using Viber and like one of the big problems with Viber is it does require a central server and their central server security architecture is not very good. So it's not a huge security in this particular use case. It's not a big deal for us, but 
I'd like to see this open source. Now, here's some of the encryption details, just in case you were wondering. Uh, they say, yes, we're using encryption protocols such as Curve 25519, ED25519, Salsa 20, and Poly 1305, and others. Links between nodes are all encrypted. All communications end-to-end -end is encrypted. They say this will be the normal in the post-Snowden era. There you go. I'm not totally sold unless I see a video. Yeah, and I want to see a Linux client, too. Yeah. Um, okay. My favorite story to keep covering in Tech Talk today, <laughs> your friend and mine, Popcorn Time, the old thorn in the side of the movie industry. Guess what? Uh, one of the many popular forks of Popcorn Time is adding Apple TV support and an iOS app and Chromecast support. Yeah, that's right. Of course, the original app was pulled, right? They got that down off of GitHub. But there's resulted in many popular forks. And there's now millions of users of Popcorn Time. Millions. Today, one of the most popular Popcorn Time forks is releasing a highly anticipated feature. I don't know how, if they're doing DNS trickery or what, but now you will be able to watch your Popcorn Time library on an Apple TV or a Chromecast. They're working on AirPlay support as well. And they're also working on mobile clients, so you can watch your popcorn. You can, I guess, you run popcorn time on the computer, and then there's, I, I don't know, it, it popcorn time's going crazy. It's going crazy. Anybody in here want to fess up to using it? Nope. <laughs> you guys, I know somebody in there's using it. It's got millions of users. I know one of you is. But that's fine. I can gladly say I am not using it. I I never tried it out. It. The only what? What? I've, I've never heard of it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, okay. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. So popcorn time is like, uh, it's, it's essentially rocking the movie industry because it is an amazingly simple, beautiful front end to all of the best videos on BitTorrent. And it all, it, it displays it all in a nice poster view. You click it and it begins streaming from BitTorrent almost instantaneously. You get to select if what what language you want, what definition, high definition, low definition, all of it from this one interface, and it's so easy. And uh, it, it essentially it's it is it is it is easier than any legal way to watch a movie. And so they've been trying to shut it down. They issued a DMCA takedown to the GitHub project. GitHub had to pull it down. But, of course, by that time it had been forked because it's open source. And so now it continues on. And they're building in some forks are building in automatic VPN. So when you start a movie, it establishes a VPN to try to hide your BitTorrent traffic. It's getting extremely sophisticated. I mean, it is stealing. I want to underscore that. But I, I find the ingenuity sort of admirable admir in, in, in some ways. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't mean to like... Cool. Yeah, exactly. Like Technologically, it's kind of amazing. And it's kind of exactly... Like if Hollywood had any sense, you know, you would log into an application just like this that was maybe tied to a payments account or a subscription, and this would be the UI they would give you if they truly wanted to combat piracy. I'd pay for it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. I mean... Uh, if you're watching the video stream, I have uh, one of the, you can see one of the UIs, and it works under uh, all operating systems. It's, it's kind of unbelievable. Yeah, okay, so they do have the beta out for Android. Look at that. I don't imagine Apple, oh, 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 that's right, I did look into this. They won't be releasing an official version for iOS, but it'll be on the jailbroken iPhones. So there you go. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Time for popcorn.eu. Wow. All right, time for my unboxing. Anybody have any guesses what it is? I don't know. I just find it suspicious that uh, Colonel Lakes is in here. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So nobody nobody wants to guess what might be in the box? I'll, I'll guess. Yeah. Okay, go. My guess is it's a nook, so mumble sounds better. Ah, oh, I thought mumble <laughs> sounds okay. Does mumble not sound okay? Well, no, it sounds fine now. It's just the last Linux unplugged. Whew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, video no, no, it's something I bought months and months and months and months ago. Oh, the the uh, the str no, you already unboxed it. I don't know. I give up. Uh, okay, nobody in the chat room has any guesses. Uh, oh, Rikai, go ahead. I don't have the chat up on the screen, so you can guess. It won't spoil it. All right, here we go. Here we go. The uh, box has been opened. Last chance to guess before I pull this sucker out. I'm pretty excited. Can you tell how excited I am? I'm oh, very excited. Was. Okay, here we go. Yep. Joke man, you got it. There it is. It is the new Oculus Rift dev kit right there. We got oh. got the new Oculus. Nice. Yeah, I'm really wow. excited about trying this thing out. This is gonna be awesome, man. It looks nice too. It looks really pro. It Facebook's feels solid. Yeah, yeah. It's my Facebook cam. 
Wow, it looks really well done. Nice. I'm looking forward to see it. I, and I don't know if it'll, I don't know what this Linux support is or what. So I'm going to be looking into this and I'll give you guys a, a report next week. There you go. Interesting. Got to hook it up to the computer. It's got HDMI. This is pretty sweet. So you hook it up to your computer. Oh, you got to hook up the camera too, right? Right. Okay, I'll see you in 90 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. Okay, that's going to wrap up the show today. That, I'm going to see now you know what I'm going to be doing after Tech Snap today. <laughs> I can't wait, boy. The, can't wait to show that to the kids too. Uh, I'd love to have you join me next week. Tech Talk today is live Monday through Thursday, jblive.tv, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, and you can go to jupiterbroadcasting.com/calendar to get that in your local time zone via robots. Also, you can email the show today at jupiterbroadcasting.com, or even better, go to techtalktoday.reddit.com. Or if you really want to be pro level, join me in the mumble room. If you just go to jblive.tv and then you do bang suggest, in the chat room we have conveniently embedded there, it will give you our Mumble address. Mumble's free. It's open source. It's a little wonky, but you can get it working. I believe in you. And then you can come in and comment on the stories. Also, if you want to kind of nudge the show in a certain technical direction or story direction, that subreddit. You got to go there. Techtalktoday.reddit.com. I check it every day. I check it every day. And, and I know some of you out there are emailing in your stories. Knock it off. I'm not checking the email every day. I'm checking that subreddit, techtalktoday.reddit.com. All right, so we've been doing the IBM-themed wrap-up. Now, I've been saving this one because IBM has a long history of working in the defense industry, and this one shows you how IBM keeps America safe. So I'll wrap up our IBM-themed week with this clip. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for joining me. See you right back here on Monday. This is where America's peace of mind begins. Around the clock, radar's electronic eyes watch the skies and report what they see to SAGE, defense system of the United States Air Force. Here is a SAGE center on 24-hour alert. At its heart is a computer developed by a research team from MIT and IBM working with the Air Force. The SAGE computer speeds the information for decisions by man in our missile age. Every scheduled flight across American frontiers is recorded ahead of time on IBM punch cards, then fed into the SAGE computer. Now the computer can draw a picture of what is supposed to be in the sky at any moment. It continually compares this expected picture with the real picture as seen by radar. If a flying object does not belong, it appears on this viewing screen. There's one now at the right of the screen. They call it a blip, unknown flying object. Friend or foe, within seconds the Air Force will know. The officer fires a light gun at the target blip. This tells the computer to track the object. At the launching site, a long-range Beaumont missile is ready for firing. Now they ask the computer to calculate an intercept point. X marks the spot where the Beaumont missile would meet the moving target if fired immediately. The officer in charge makes the final decision. Fire. At the moment of launching, the Beaumont missile receives instructions from the IBM computer. As the missile screams toward target, radar keeps on tracking. With electronic control, the computer automatically adjusts the missile to meet any change in the target flight. There is no escape. Intercept. This was a test, one of many successful tests of the SAGE Beaumont security team, our new system of air defense. To be ready for the worst, so that the worst will never happen, America is now armed with instant electronic reflexes. The SAGE computer, made by IBM, is another example of the vast new powers that man can achieve through the creative use of his mind. Strength for national defense, speed for informed decisions, service for a growing America. This is IBM, freeing man's mind to shape the future.